across the street and then cross the street not at a crosswalk. Um, that, I believe, was to lead the people with the cameras over here to a place where they can be, and then they cross the street illegally, right, um, where you're not supposed to cross, uh, and told the people with cameras, oh, you're not allowed to cross here, you're not allowed to do what we're doing, and um, so you can see the people with cameras had to get a distant shot of um, my arrest, even though the cop car that they were taking me to was right on the edge of the square. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that with that whole roundabout walk, well, we're, it's obvious to me they were trying to keep cameras away from capturing the event, because it looks bad. Um, a couple of things that are behind the scenes that you, you didn't see here was the, the woman who um, <coughs> Officer Shorts has taken, the, the woman who was supposed to come up to me and arrest me, she just kind of stands there, and it looks really awkward and weird. Like, I don't know if anyone's caught that, but she's just like, all right, here he is, like, what am I supposed to do now? It's like she's a new cop who's never arrested someone before. But um, that was, I think, because we had a discussion before this happened. Um, just like 20 minutes before I packed the bowl, um, I, t I just went up and was like, hey, you know, we're strangers. Um, I was hoping we could make this contract, a verbal contract, where I don't put my hands on you and you don't put your hands on me, because that would be weird and we're strangers, so that's, you know, normal that we don't touch each other. And she was like, you know, okay, well, we'll just see what happens. We'll just, you know, <laughs> just, you know don't give me any reason to, to, you know. And I just wanted to nail it down and make uh, these verbal contracts with the people who were likely going to arrest me if I had did something illegal, that like, hey, let's not aggress against each other. If I'm not aggressing against you, please don't put your hands on me. It's, I, it's a pretty simple rule that they teach kindergartners. You know, it's just the kindergarten rule. Um, so that was a behind the scenes that I, I think is important. Also, this whole activism thing, it, this came three days after, yeah, like three or four days after I was arrested for having the dance party, and we all kind of bombed. Like, all, all the activists were, you know, like, I don't want to speak for everyone, but they were like yelling and, and cursing and saying like, hey man, what are you doing? Get off of him. And it, it just didn't look good on camera, because we had a lot of cameras filming what, what had happened, and it just didn't look good when we had uh, yelling and screaming. and so. A bunch of activists got together after that happened, and we were like, we don't like how that looked. How can we make civil disobedience look uh, better so that like, when people view it, they're on our side? Like, they are saying, cops, bad guy, like, people who aren't hurting people, good guys. Because um, it's not always easy to do. A lot of times when people see a, a video of someone getting arrested, you'll see in the YouTube comments or something, people are like, oh, he was asking for it. and. Um, you know, the cops are just doing their job, and why, why do they have to make it difficult for them? But here, I mean, here you can see there's no reason that all those people needed to take time out of their day and, and waste taxpayer money on the, the cars and the, the pay of all these officers who, it's like, it's totally ridiculous. So you all, you all know that. But that gets me to like the how-to, um, which I started explaining. How-to civil dis. I, I would say the camera is the most important thing. If it's not on camera, it didn't happen. And you gotta put it out online as fast as possible. Um, that's, that's what I would recommend, because that holds everyone accountable. Everyone who was out in public now is, is online, and everyone can see what happened and judge for themselves. I um, that it's also great to get that video out before the local newspapers even report on it. Yeah, then, um, then you're a, a real hero and you, your views go way up, so if you count on that, it's, it's What you good. can also do is call local newspapers beforehand and let them know that you're planning to commit civil disobedience and let them know that you are aware of your rights and will be videotaping the entire event and invite them to bring your reporter and photographer along. Well, that would be huge. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. I would write to um, a, a paper. If, if, that, if you want that kind of publicity, if you know that you're going to be participating in some civil dis, and definitely, I don't have to call it, you feel free to yeah. just say stuff. Whatever, I was going to say, it's a lot of fun too, you can have a lot of fun with that. I know when we were at the Yale uh, National Conference this summer, the guys went down and uh, 
we're dusting off the Jefferson Memorial as like a, you know, this looks like shit. It's covered in like spider webs and everything. So we just got a bunch of like feather dusters and we're dusting it all off. And I was back at like the home base so that if they got all arrested, we could go pick them all up. It wasn't a big deal. Calling all of the local news, pretending I was an old lady who saw these guys walking down with feather dusters and was concerned for them. You know, didn't want them to get caught. Like, bless their hearts for going down there and cleaning off the monuments. We know 